anybody Irish in the group? Yes, sir. You're Irish, you come to San Francisco, 1860s, you're going to start a business. What kind of business are you going to start? Booze. <laughs> booze, booze. A bar, a bar. Flood and O'Brien came here in 1860s. They hadn't done well in the silver mines. We went from gold mines to silver mines. And there was much more money made in silver than there was in gold. And they hadn't done well in the mines, so they decided to, of course, being Irish, to open a bar. Location, 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 down in the financial district. Two drinks for a quarter. Certain days they throw in a fish stew. And they serve the drink and they listen. They listen because the people coming in were trading the stocks in the silver mines. And they heard what was hot, what was not. And they began to trade behind the scenes. And after about seven years of this, they were pretty well off. They closed down and went into the stock business. And two more Irishmen walked into their office within a few months. Fair and Mackey. Fair is where my finger is down here at the bottom. He does all of the talking. Mackey doesn't say a word. Fair said there's a mine in, in uh, Nevada. He says, I worked that mine for a corporation. They don't think there's anything there. It was $300 a share a year ago. Now it's $40 a share. We buy it, we take it over. I know the silver's there, I'll make it happen. They bought it, they took over. He hits it for a couple hundred million dollars for Irishmen. So remember, Leland buys the whole block down here. James Flood, being from New York, what are you gonna build your mansion out of in New York if you have money? Brownstone, brownstone. So he buys this whole block here. It's a shorter block, but he buys it. And he brings this brownstone from Connecticut around the horn in the 1880s. And when it arrived in San Francisco, the people of San Francisco went nuts. Not in a good way. Thought this was the ugliest stone they'd ever seen. <laughs> they asked if he would paint it white. Or better yet, send it back and build it out of, build his mansion out of redwood like all the rest of the same people. He did none of that. He proceeded to build a 42-room mansion here, 42 rooms, completed it in 1886, and this is what it originally looked like. Cost him about $2 million. Cost, and then he put in $2 million worth of fine furnishings. He finishes it, and um, he dies about four years later. And his wife is living in a mansion in Pacific Heights, so this is, this is empty in 1906. Empty. And the fire comes up. Remember those artists that were over there at the, the Art Institute brought their paintings over here because it was the safest place on the hill. After three days of fire, this is what the building looked like. The walls are still standing, but the inside with their paintings, because of the heat, fire, insides are gutted, blown away. So just the walls are standing. And the people of San Francisco said, good time to tear it down. Tear it down. But Mrs. Flood was approached by a group of men called the PU Club here in San Francisco. What does that stand for in San Francisco, the PU Club? Pacific Union, Pacific Union Club, Pacific Union Club. An all men's club in 1906. And their clubhouse was downtown, been burned down. And they approached Mrs. Flood and said, we'd like to buy this burned out building, make it our clubhouse. She sold it to them. And they hired Willis Polk, the famous architect in San Francisco. And he said, don't tear it down. Don't tear it down. In fact, I'm going to add a wing on each end out of the same quarried brownstone that Flood built it out of. And he comes in and in 1910, 
the Pacific Union Club, an all men's club moved into this building, 1910. And they're still here. And it's still an all men's club. And you ladies don't, don't, uh, you know, don't get nasty with me. Right? Still an all men's club. Still an all men's club. If there was a motto, it would be no women. <laughs> no reporters. No reporters. If you sign up to be a member here, and there's about 850. You sign up, you don't talk about what goes on within these walls. If you do, you're out of here. And the third point, not many, not many Democrats. Not many Democrats. Not many Democrats. They have added an Olympic-sized swimming pool in the basement. Women are never allowed there. And so they're, they're here. A friend of mine uh, works for one of the members here. And they came to lunch here just a few months ago. He was a pretty new employee with this man. And as they're sitting in the dining room having lunch, my friend pulls out something to make some notes. And the man, the member said, you put that away. No notes. No notes. We don't leave here with any information in note form. So still thought of in that way. About 250 people waiting to get in. People say, what are the dues? We have no idea. And if you have to ask, then you shouldn't join. <laughs> so, Pacific Union Club, very private club. You won't see any signs for it. Yeah. We'll walk around the block eventually, no signs. It's the most talk, asked about building here on, on when I'm up here on the hill. People will ask, what is this building? What is it? And many people will go up the stairs during the summer in shorts and tank tops and try to get in and it's coat and tire required. Of course they don't get beyond the outside wall. Turn. Let's turn and go. Look at the Crocker garage across the way. Oh, isn't that a great oh, that's fabulous nineteen so, fifties in San Francisco. But the, the thing about it is that's interesting. If you look at the word garage and let your eyes follow to the right, you're gonna see some letters that have been taken out, scrubbed out. And what it says is, the future site of the Crocker Hotel. Future site of the Crocker Hotel. And you're gonna learn about Charles Crocker uh, when we make another stop, because he's part of the big four. And we have no idea, as guides, why they did not build a hotel here. No idea, we haven't been able to figure that out yet. We haven't been able to research and find it. Anybody can ever tell me an answer, I'd love to hear it. So, let's go right next door right next door to this cute mansion. Oh my gosh, cute mansion called the Jewel Box. The Jewel Box here on Knob Hill.